Now from here, you'll see our first file here. Uh, we didn't save, we didn't upload, we didn't download. Everything's automatically saved every time you make an edit here in Figma. So I'm just gonna go to our, our first artboard here. So from here, I'd like to call out, if we look over here on the layers panel, we have all of our layers here and you'll see that our initial frame with our three rectangles are inside of the frame and the other elements that we put in here are outside of the frame. And I'd like to call your attention to this right here where it says page one. If we click on that, we'll see that we have page and page one. We can change this to, you know, uh, say drafts just to identify what we're looking at. And right here, we've got a plus here. So to add another page, I'm going to click a plus page and I'm going to say name this uh, components. For any web design project where you have a few components you want to to start your right. And I'm going to create a card, an informational card that'll say have a, a photo at the top and a, a quick little blurb, just to show you how quick and easy it does start to become to, to make components for your designs. So I'm just gonna say, start off with a frame here, grab a frame. And I'm not gonna start with a device size so much as I'm just going to pull out a frame and say, just for nice even numbers, I'm gonna make this uh, 250 wide by 400. This will be my card, my informational card. And I'm going to grab a quick image. I'm just gonna bring over Google and I'm going to search for say, uh, blue skies. Any image will really do. And what do we have here? I think I'll, I think I like this one. Any image will really do. I'm just going to copy that image here and come on over to Figma and I'm just gonna click paste. And now I have my image and my frame. And I am going to bring my image inside of my frame. And you see just dragging it from off the side of the board to inside the frame. It's automatically moved in your layers panel to inside the frame. And you'll notice that the image was cropped to the boundaries of the frame. If I select frame, you can actually control that by clicking on the frame itself. And over here where we have our uh, sizes and positions and such for the frame, you'll notice this button here called clip content. And if you uncheck that, anything that is inside the frame will not be cropped by the boundaries of the frame, which that can be used design-wise. And if you would like to have it cropped, you click clip content, and that can be used again effectively to control the, the boundaries of any images that you want to use or, or any other content really like text or, or such. Uh, so I'm going to grab the handlebars of this image and I'm just going to reposition it here at the top of my frame. And I'm going to click plus to zoom on in here. And just to start, I am going to grab my text and I'm going to click on in here for text. And this looks a little large. So I'm going to say 48 and I'm going to say this is my title and this would be how I'd begin to start to create a component that I would start to use for any number of things so this title could be anything I just want to start with say a large h1 type title at the top here and then I'm going to grab my text button a text tool again and I'm going to I'm going to drag out a text box and I'm going to set this down to just regular text size of 12 or 14 14 it should be good and I'm just going to add some dummy text for the moment here just to fill up the text box and begin to have a almost just a sketch of a component. And I can position this into place. You'll notice these orange lines. This is telling me the center of the card. And as I move, it'll, it will tell me when I'm aligned with the center. This guide right here that popped up, that's telling me that 
I'm flush with the title above it. So you have a number of guides that will pop up and just tell you where you are. And it's actually snapping to those guides. So precision becomes pretty easy. I'm gonna open this up a little. And you'll notice that since it was a text box, it's gonna fill in. I can change the, let's say I want the alignment to be center or right aligned or left aligned or over here, just for a little bit extra control over text, you'll see a three dots for the type details. And it's a little hidden, but if you click on that, you have additional alignment controls right here. And I would like to have this text justified. I'm not sure why they have justified slightly outside from left and center, but justified is over here. You also have your underline, your strike throughs, your list types for bulleted and numbered lists as well as a changing case for all uppercase, all lowercase, title case, which is if you look at the sample, it's every word becomes capitalized. Uh, this is small cap, so if you look there, the T is capitalized and larger, and everything else that would be a lowercase is a, an uppercase, but it's a smaller uppercase. And, and then here we just have forced small caps, which is everything is caps. So I really just want to justify align this so that my card looks nice and organized. And I'm gonna come over here to my rectangle tool and I'm going to just pull out a rectangle here. I'm gonna use the guides to make sure everything aligns loosely. And I'm going to change the color of that from gray to say maybe a, not a green, maybe a, maybe a nice blue to match that sky. If you like, you can actually use the eyedropper and I, maybe I need to even pull this, this sort of matching dark blue up there. And that looks like a good button to start with. And I'm going to grab my text tool again and in the middle of that rectangle, I'm going to type the word click. I'm going to select that and make the text a little bit larger, say 24 points. This is a very large scale, but I just want to demonstrate the initial use of these tools to begin to start to make components. You'll see that the alignment tool there is going to help me center that. And this button looks a little needs a little bit more style here. So I'm going to select the actual rectangle. Notice I'm selecting on the rectangle. If I want, right now, if I move the rectangle, the click does not come along with it. So if I actually either select both layers here, so I have both the click and the rectangle selected together, or if I were inside the frame and I clicked and dragged until I selected both those, you'll notice that click and rectangle are now selected. If I right click, you get a context window that comes up here. And what I'm gonna to do to group those together is right here, group selection. So now over in my layers, you will see over here, I have a group and inside there is my click and my rectangle. I'm just gonna rename this to button. And now just for convenience sake, you as you're designing an element, now if I click this, the text and the rectangle will go along together. So. One last little touch. I'm gonna to go back over to the rectangle. And this is directly that blue rectangle shape. And I'm going to come over here to our design properties and I'm going to give this say 25 pixels of border radius. So it's now more of a pill shape. And down here under effects, we have a number of effects that we can play with. And I'm just gonna click this plus button to add an effect. And that will automatically give you a drop shadow. If you're not looking for a drop shadow specifically, make sure you just click on that rectangle there. Effects. Here's my drop shadow. You can change this to an inner shadow, a layer blur, a background blur, or from here, if you want to say, turn that effect on and off, you have an eyeball. If you want to remove the effect entirely, you have this minus. But if you click on the actual effects settings icon right over here to the left of drop shadow, here you can play with the color of the shadow. Let's say we want a red shadow, black to gray to white. We have the color control right here. You also have the transparency 
So if you want it to be uh, less transparent or more transparent, I'll just move that to the side so we can see it better. Transparency. And color. And I'm just going to bring this back down to a nice sort of neutral gray. And we also have over here our controls for blur. You can see it getting fuzzier. Just click on blur and go left to right or click into the, uh, into the actual number here. And you can change it directly with the keypad. Uh, spread is how far away it spreads away from the original object. If you're familiar with drop shadows and such from either Photoshop or Illustrator or Sketch, they behave in much the same way. And we also have the positioning here for ver left and right with the X. So where is the shadow falling? As well as, I'm going to put that in the center, as well as the vertical control here with the Y for where it falls up or above or below the actual element. So I'll put it a little bit below. And maybe I'll bring the opacity down a little and just a little softer. That's fine. Uh, you also have control over here of the actual opacity right here, as well as in the color picker. So you can add, I'm going to put this to a nice even 65%. So. Here is our drop shadow and our effect. And you can see very quickly, now I'll just grab the frame and everything belongs to the frame itself. And this becomes a single component. And very quickly, we can start to design elements that we want to start to build out our pages with.